Alright, so here's where you actually panicked. You started bolting to the surface. And you're actually holding your breath the whole way. You realize how dangerous that was? Yeah, I, I, I panicked. I, I, I don't know what else to say. In, in all honesty, though, panic is, is not an excuse. We never, ever, for any reason, hold our breath when we're in the water, especially here in our cities. What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, I've got a very special guest. This is one of my best friends. This is Robbie Gross. We've known each other since elementary. Um, so, yeah, basically elementary school. So, we're both in our 40s now. So, well over, you know, 30-some-odd years we've known each other. And uh, I had the distinct honor of certifying Robbie in his open water program back in 2013. And it was really cool because... Robbie is a good friend of mine to actually certify somebody that's really close to me. Um, unfortunately, you had to step away from diving for a while. You got back in how many years ago? About four. About four years ago, you kind of got back into it. And what we're going to do in today's video, we don't typically do this. I, I don't do reaction-based videos unless it's something that we can really, truly learn from. But unfortunately, Robbie had an incident on a dive that we were making in a local quarry. We were going down to about that 100-foot mark, but around the 70-foot mark, you actually started to panic correct correct i felt like i was getting choked and uh, like i couldn't intake enough air so i panicked and yep he he panicked he bolted to the surface and you know it happens unfortunately sometimes and you know thankfully he's still alive to talk about it i know we talked quite a bit after the incident um, and which we'll get into in this video too about some of the concerns, whether it's decompression sickness, pneumothorax, arterial gas embolism. You know, those are the concerns that's constantly going through your brain, especially me as his dive buddy on that. But, um, you know, I think that not only did you learn from this instance, I learned from it as well being your buddy. And then furthermore, the other guys, I think we had four or five people total with us that day. Um, they learned from it. But what, what our goal here is, is for you guys here on YouTube to learn as well, because anytime that we go through something, if we talk about it, if we put it out there for others to see that we're not perfect, we're not diving gods, you know, we still make mistakes, and in your case, you made a mistake, you're a new diver, you panic, but even when I make a mistake, if I put it out there for you guys to learn from, then we can all grow as divers and all be safe as well, and that's that's our main goal here on the channel, is creating safe divers and helping you guys learn as well. So, with that being said, Robbie, you ready to jump into today's video? Let's check it. Perfect. So, what we're going to do is we're going to watch through the video together. And we'll give you a little bit of commentation here or there, but then we'll break it down step by step to what actually happened. And then I'll give you some pointers, same pointers I've kind of gave you in the past on it, but I'll kind of give you some pointers on how to prevent this in the future as well. Right. Sound good? Sounds All right, good. so let's go ahead and get the video started here. And... Uh, Let's, let's see what we can learn. Now, a quick backstory. We are at one of our local quarries. This is called the Lake Norman Quarry. It's part of the PDRA or the Piedmont Dive and Rescue Association. Max depth here is 98 feet on a good day. It averages about 95, but the visibility is usually pretty phenomenal. Um, and considering the quarry is aerated now, there's no thermocline. So in the summertime, you can make actually this dive in a three mil wetsuit down about 100 feet, and it's it's pretty warm. It's about 75 to 80 degrees on the bottom. Um, so we are actually, I think this was actually in the wintertime when we was diving this, wasn't it? Late fall. Late fall, because I know we were all in dry suits. You had a dry suit. You had a brand new hood that you had never wore. What else was you wearing? Yeah, a brand new Neptune 3 full face mask. Yep, so you had a brand new full face mask as well. And so um, you will see very quickly and that things occurred. And, and you'll see that panic set in. Now, another thing that we need to talk about before we hit play here is this is from your point of view. So I, I think if I remember correctly, there were two divers out in front of me that were leading a dive. And then I was directly behind them. You were behind me probably 10, maybe 15 feet. And probably up. I'd say another 8 to 12 feet above you. Yeah, so you were behind me and up above me because we were all kind of going on an incline. And then there was another instructor that was behind you, another one of our instructors, yeah. So we, we had a group of four or five divers. We're all going down together. We're probably 10, 15 feet apart. And you'll see in the visibility. Visibility was really good this day. Um, but what you're going to see is from his point of view, you're going to see me in the shot. But everything that you hear and witness will be as 
him because the camera's mounted to him so as we go down. So with that being said, let's jump in and let's see what happened during this dive. So here we're making our descent. There's me, you see my white fins there. Yeah, and I, I think you were probably 10 to 15 foot above me, but you were also 10 to 15 foot behind me as well. So let's say a, a 30 foot gap probably. And we're probably at the 20, 25 foot mark here, and I'm, I'm another, I'm probably at the 40 foot mark. I'm, I'm down below you a little ways. There are two divers in front of me. There's another instructor behind you as well. Uh, and you can't really see it here on camera, but we're actually following the line all the way down to what we call the deep platform of the cruiser. And there, I think you'd actually try to signal. I can already tell. I'm on my tank. Yeah, I can hear your breathing's already yeah. pretty erratic. And now's when I start getting a little choked. I start panicking. I feel like I'm getting choked. Yeah. Like I can't breathe, and that's when my main panic sets in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the only thing that was going through my mind at the time. There, I, you'd actually got to I've got kids. I've got to get to the surface. Yeah. I gotta see my kids. And I think, and and one thing to note, really quick, if you pay attention and listen closely, you'll notice. You know, I was at about the seventy foot mark. I don't think you were quite at seventy feet. You were about fifty five ish. But he held his breath from fifty five feet to fifty. And this is something that we're going to discuss in this video. Why this this situation was so dangerous. But there, of course, you're exhaling by the time you get there. You're back to the surface. Let's see what happens. You rip your mask off. That's that's a common sign of, of diver in distress or diver panic. By this time, I've already made it up because I, I chased you up to the surface. There, you ripped your hood off. I'm sucking in as much air as I can at the surface. Yeah, so, definitely hyperventilating. Yeah. I think I even heard you say, "I can't breathe. I can't breathe." Right, I did. Definitely a scary situation. And even on this dive, on my way up, I came up so fast, I locked my computer out for 24 hours, folks. Uh, yeah, so we're going to watch it again. We're going to slow it down, just kind of segment by segment here and talk. But look, what I want you to do is tell the audience what was going through your mind at the very beginning of the dive. So as we are descending down at the very part, what was actually going through your mind? Going through my mind, I was controlled there for a brief, brief little while, and the next thing I know, I think it's actually the first time I actually felt a dry suit squeeze, and it set it in on me. When it did, that's when I couldn't, I couldn't breathe, and I totally forgot my training to add a bump of air to relieve the squeeze. If I'd have done that, I'd have probably been fine to have continued on with the dive. And for the record, he did have his dry suit hooked up. He is dry suit certified. Um, but I think a lot of times when stress sets in, we do, like you said, you forgot your training at that point. Right. So, yeah, as you, you can already tell, and if you listen to his breathing throughout this, you'll see that he is not very comfortable. Um, and, and I'm not putting really any of the blame on him at this point. Um, there's a lot of things that was actually going wrong that day. Out of everybody that was there, there were two instructors. There was myself, and there was another instructor that was behind you, but we were all separated by at least, you know, 15 foot in depth and 15 foot. Exactly. We're, we're following a line down, which, which you can't see in the camera, but um, it, it's hard to tell, especially for the instructor that was behind him. It's going to be difficult to tell what's going through that person's mind because all you see is their, their fans. Yeah, you can't really see nothing. And for me, I'm trying to keep up the divers that's in front of me as well. That's one reason we put you between two instructors. And so, you know, every now and then, I have to turn to look at him. So, um, and we're going to talk about how we can prevent that situation. We can still dive in the same format, but I'll show you in the future how we can prevent that situation as well. But if we zoom forward on the video here, we'll see I, your breathing just immediately, I can tell. It's just, just labored. It's very labored breathing. It's almost, you're almost to the point of hyperventilation. And one, one of the things that I personally think is causing that is you're taking the breath in very fast but you're not letting it all out. So you're actually retaining carbon dioxide, which is causing that labor breathing. It's causing you to be starved for oxygen. And if we remember from even the open water class, but more importantly, even your rescue diver class, right. anytime we have a problem, stop everything you're doing and breathe. Think about what's causing that problem 
and breathe and then act upon it to fix that problem if you can, but yet still breathe. And breathing is kind of the key to everything. Breathing is the, the key to remaining calm. Breathing is the key to solving the problem. This In this situation, one of the things that you could have done as well is just turned around to the instructor that was behind you and said, hey, something's not right. I need to catch my breath. Um, because obviously it was it was difficult for you to signal to me. It had been very easy to signal to him as well. Um, but yeah, get your breathing under control. In that note, when he's saying I could have turned around, when you're a panic diver, in my mind, you see the guy in front of you, and that's your directive. That's where you want to go. So keep that in mind when you're diving with a group. If there's somebody behind you, don't forget you can always turn around. You got buddies in front and behind mm -hmm. when you're getting a group like that. And sometimes your buddy might be just within arm's reach. Yeah. Uh, and and so, yeah, get your breathing under control. Try to relax. And there's nothing wrong. There's absolutely no shame in aborting a dive. Anytime, any diver at any point in time can abort a dive and say, nope, not today. I'm going to the surface. But once again, we still need to breathe. Right. Um, breathing is key. We need to perfuse more oxygen. That way our, our brain's going to work properly and we can make good decisions. But um, let's see if we can find the exact spot where uh, you, you get a hold of it. Because it, I think, it, was you tapping your tank or something? I, I remember tapping, three. I was tapping my tank with a double ender trying to get your attention. Gotcha. And... Uh, where I think you heard about the third tap is when you turned around. Yep. And so right about here is I heard it, and you can actually see me. I'm, I'm going to hit play here. You can see me turn around. And I say, you can see me, I, I raise my hand. I said, are you okay? Or did I say stop? I thought uh, I was, uh, okay. it's, it's one of the two of you that yep. said, are I okay? Or you said stop one. I, and then... Kind of hard to see. Yeah, and there was there was no response whatsoever. You literally started blowing. I, just, I started blowing, and I went. I shot up. I started kicking. Yeah. Now we're actually going to time his ascent right here. Um, and like I said, I'm at approximately 70 feet. You're probably 15 feet above me, so you're at 55 feet, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to. I'm going to turn the volume up here so we can hear. But we're going to listen. From the time you took your last breath to the time you started exhaling, we're going to time that ascent rate because it was just before the surface. If it was 15 feet or 10 feet, we can kind of guesstimate that. But I know it, you, you are extremely lucky and blessed to be alive because you did hold your breath for so long. Um, but we're going to see how fast you come up from death. So let me turn the volume up here and we will listen. There you gasp. One. Sixteen seconds. I just counted, guys. And you're probably at fifteen feet there when you when you started exhaling. So fifty-five feet to fifteen feet in fifteen seconds. Mm -hmm. Holding your breath. Yep. And one thing that we got to remember is the biggest pressure drop is from 30 foot, foot. or 33 feet to, to the, the surface. surface. So, yeah, you are definitely lucky. And I, and I don't want to be hard on you, but you need to understand the severity of the situation, which you do now, obviously. But um, we should never, for any reason, hold our breath during ascent. Even in panic, we need to be exhaling the whole entire way. So even if you feel like you can't breathe, exhale out. Right. So um, tell tell the viewers, once you did panic, what was going through, was anything going through your mind? Once I panicked, once I realized I was, I, I was just completely, I just completely lost it. The only thing I had going through my head was I've got family at home and I got children I still need to teach, which I hope my children become divers. And I hope they watch this video to let them know just how stupid their dad can actually be. When something, when something, when it doesn't go the way you expect, and when you panic. That, and I hope it teaches you guys to slow down. And even if you have to, go to a pool and practice with all your new gear at a shallower depth to get it down before you even remotely go 
30 feet deep. Yeah, and and you wasn't a stranger to dry suits. You've been dry suit certified for a year. You've actually been full face certified for a year at that point. Yep. But this was your first time in cold water with a dry suit, a mask, new um, dry suit hood, hood, and the full and face. The mask. Yeah. So, yeah, like he said, go to the pool and practice with your new gear before you ever take it out into open water. And even as an instructor trainer, I do the same thing. If, if I get a new piece of gear, I usually rush it over to the pool, make, you know, an hour, two hour dive in the pool just to get it, you know, comfortable with it. And then I even take it out in open water after the fact. So, but yeah, it, um, we're, th there's one more thing I want to kind of talk about here before we close it out. Some of the things that you can do to prevent these problems. First of all, train, practice, and go diving. Train for scenarios like this. You need to be able to communicate with your buddy. I don't remember, did you have gloves on that day? No. You didn't have gloves? So, you know, train signaling to your buddy. You know, take take a double ender, tap on your tank, whatever you need to do to get the, uh, practice your hand signals over and over. If you're wearing gloves, make sure you're practicing proper hand signals with gloves. We all know what the OK symbol is, but if you got really thick gloves, you may have to do it like this. Uh, even in clear water, we could have used a flashlight. I mean, he could have just shined his light to try to get my attention as well. Um, because if I'm wearing a hood, I may not be able to hear him dinging on his tank and things like that. Um, another good thing that we could have done, we didn't have them on this particular dive, but mirrors. You know, our Lake Kicker scuba mirror, throw you a picture up here for it. I'll link you a video to it. The mirrors really come in handy because in this situation where you got a team and you're all moving down together, you may not all be side by side, but instead of me constantly having to turn around to look, I can literally just hold it up, look in the mirror, see if he's okay. Um, and once again, we had another diver there in the back that you could have turned on. And briefings. Briefings are so important, guys, so that everybody knows what to do during an emergency. That way there's no guesstimation. And if somebody does panic, then everybody knows how to handle that situation. But Absolutely. But yeah, Robbie... First of all, thank you first and foremost for being willing to make a video showing these mistakes. I know you learn from them. I know even as an instructor trainer, I learn from them. And hopefully our viewers are going to learn as well. It's going to keep them safe, make them better divers. Well, it's just my feeling, Brian, that yes, it was something that happened to me. It was a my mistake. And I, my futuristic goal is to be an instructor. It's not in the books right now. But I know as a person who teaches, it can teach some things. Even a mistake that I've made can teach somebody else out there in that world how to be safer and how to slow down and how to think. Absolutely. And guys, trust me, I've made plenty of mistakes in my diving career. I still make mistakes in my diving career. And just because I'm an instructor trainer does not make me a diving god. Uh, I'm a human. I'm fallible, just like each and every one of us is. And I've even put videos out there for you guys to learn. The Troy Springs incident is one of the most embarrassing videos I've ever made here on YouTube. And others have learned from it. You've learned from my mistakes, just like I hope that you guys learned from Robbie's mistake in this situation. And, and the biggest thing that... Uh, I need you to understand, in this particular situation, the worst thing that could happen, the worst thing that can happen to any diver is an arterial gas embolism. Yes, decompression sickness is bad, but arterial gas embolism is even worse than that. And in this situation, we hadn't been at depth long enough. This was the very beginning part of the dive for decompression sickness to even be there. So, you know, skipping a safety stop wasn't even... A, a, a concern at all in this dive, but holding his breath on the way up, you are very, very lucky to even be here. The big guy upstairs was definitely looking out for you. Um, so I can't stress it enough, guys. Everybody here watching this video knows the golden rule. Never, ever, for any reason, hold your breath. If you have an emergency and you have to bolt, make sure you're exhaling the whole way. And you had plenty of gas, but like you said, you were panicked. You felt that stuffiness. You felt like you couldn't breathe. Always exhale. If you remember that, always exhale, then you, you can pretty much get through these situations just like you did. So, um, but yeah, anything you want to finish with? Yeah, guys, I want to say something else. And I think part of my problem was when I got back into diving after being out of it for a couple of years, I went back in it headstrong, full blast, full steam ahead. I wanted to get there. Don't have that mentality. Slow down and don't overdo 
your learning capabilities. Take one class, do your skills, practice your skills till they come second nature to you. Once they're second nature, then go back and take another class. I know Brian's probably going to crucify me for that because he is a dive shop owner and instructor, but it's your life, it's your safety. Yeah, absolutely. You know, racking up cards don't mean nothing. Your safety means everything. So like Robbie said, take a class, learn as much as you can, practice those skills over and over and over to where they basically become second nature to you. Then go out and take another class. Don't let anybody, don't let an instructor or a shop owner ever talk you into taking a class that you are simply not ready for. And I would encourage you, when you go to sign up for a class, Talk to the instructor before you purchase that program. Find out what is in the program, what is expected of you in the program. And a lot of instructors like myself, you know, I'll tell Robbie the truth and say, hey man, I don't think you're ready for that. Why don't we go to the pool and practice a skill or two and see where you're at before you actually purchase this program and get in pretty much over your head, pardon the pun there. But you, you never want to put yourself into a situation that you're simply not ready for. But Robbie, brother, I love you. Thanks for making the video. I really hope you guys learned from it. If you got any questions for myself or Robbie, drop me a comment down below. Robbie's going to be monitoring this video as well, so he might come on here and actually respond to you guys as well. But guys, if you did like the video, give me a th thumbs up. Definitely share it. I'm not big in making reaction videos like this. I know there's other channels that do that. That's not wor what we're about. We're simply about education and safety or diver safety here on our channel. But if you do want to see more content, especially things that we're actually involved in, Absolutely. and it's situations we've been in, then yeah, in the future we may make some more videos like this as long as you guys learn from it. If you got any ideas of videos, drop me a comment down below and we'll try to make it as well. But we're going to go ahead and get signed off today. Take care, God bless, and we'll see you in the next video.